Hey Falcons, I'm Kobe Clayson, a student here at Daytona State College, here for a special live interview segment with a special guest today. Uh, we're at the Daytona Beach campus in the Southeast Museum of Photography, just wrapping up this Thursday morning of our entrepreneurial speaker series. I'm joined by Pegeen Echevarria, is that I right? I would just go by Pegeen. Pegeen, um, best-selling writer, award-winning businesswoman. Is there anything you don't do? Cook. Cook? I don't cook. <laughs> I don't cook. I, I, cook. I, I, I can be a good cook. I just don't cook. I see. So just because you, you eat out then. <laughs> I, yeah, I do. That's my kind of lady, right? <laughs> yeah, I just, that's what I usually do. You know, it's cook or like a, a bag of salad and just put it in and that's all good. So from what I understand about you is that you kind of have this I wouldn't say catchphrase, but it's a phrase you use a lot, it being called to lead. Mm -hmm. um, you say everyone has this capacity. Was there a time or a moment in your life where you thought of this for the first time, where you actualized it? Yeah, you know, what I, so what I know is, so I had this thing, called to lead, ah, oh, called, called to lead. <laughs> and what I know is that every one of us at some points in life are called to lead, right? So, so somebody will say, uh, you be in charge of this, or you be in charge of that. So me growing up, I always found myself at times saying, oh, you know, Peggy will run that. She'll, she'll be in charge of that, right? She'll be in charge of organizing the party. She'll be in charge of, oh, Peggy will go talk to the dean. She'll, she'll tell them off, you know, let Peggy do it. So I, I got a sense, I definitely knew that for myself, I kept on finding myself in this positions. I didn't know it was leadership. Mm. I didn't know that I was leading. It was more like your friends are pushing you in front of everybody else saying, try it. There, was, there used to be a commercial many, many years ago called, give it to Mikey, he'll lead it. It was like this cereal commercial. Mm -hmm. And it was like, Mike, Mikey would do anything. And kind of like, that's what happens with people who are always called to lead, like, oh, you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. So, as I as I matured and as I, you know, when I left the states and I left the gang and I went to to Spain, again I had to take a step my step up. I had to do something, and that was to start my business. Right? I had to do something because I had to make money. And that was the bottom line. It wasn't any like fancy thing I want to say to the world. No, I I wanted to eat. I wanted to go eat, and I wanted to be able to go out and party. Those were my two driving forces for starting a business um, because I couldn't get a job there. I was a, a foreigner, right? And, but then when I came back and I found myself kind of stepping up in different positions, it was just I was being moved up rank, I was being changing. It, was, it wasn't as though I was, I wouldn't have used the term ambitious for myself. I, I, it was more like people would say, you do it, you do it, you can do it, you do it, I shall do it. And then I started meeting other people that had the similar background. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that this call to lead is, it's an internal, it's kind of like an internal push, an internal prodding. Uh, you see a problem, you're going to take a solution, like, kind of like what you just did, right? So you had, oh, here's my assignment, this is what I needed to do, I didn't know what, and you went and searched, what do I want to do when I would do, and you, you're the one that pulled this together. You're the one that stood, said, I'm going to have this interview, I'm going to organize this, I'm going to get that done, so that you were being called to lead about this and bring me to people that didn't know me. So I thank you for following your calling to lead. So call to lead is this, this internal fire that you can't, you can't put out. You just can't. You make it so easy to understand. And, and you have such a rich personal backstory and obviously a lot of experience comes with this. But for our students who maybe don't have a lot of experience who are just starting out and they're trying to get their business going or they're trying to get out there, what should they be thinking about? Our current student leaders, uh, whether they're in clubs or they're actually self-starters trying to get their business going, to better position themselves in five or 10 years? What should they think about now? Great, 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 great. So, so there's a couple of things. Um, one is, what's your most authentic self? Like really, what is your, how do you express yourself? 
So are you maybe dressing or putting outfits together or even how you write and how you put it? Are you trying to be like somebody else or are you trying to express who you are? So, so it's like the words that you use or the way maybe you cut your hair that you're, you want to express who you are in your most authentic way. So that's really important because you have to find yourself. The, the second thing that I think that is, is so um, wonderful is you have to be willing to fail. Now, now, it's really interesting when we talk about failure because people put, like, put this like, big thing, oh, failure. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's really being more like going to a, a banquet, right? You go to, um, I forget the name of this, like these grand buffet things, right? And you go to a buffet, and you know that we've all taken the food at the buffet, but then you're spinning at the plate, and you're, you're test tasting the food, and you're like, ooh, I don't like that. You don't call that a failure, right? Mm -hmm. you, it's like, ooh, I don't like that. It's not, it's not like, I failed at eating the shrimp. No, it's just like, ooh, I didn't like that, right? Yeah. So you have to just know that's part of you also in life. It's not, failure is just like, a, ooh, I don't like that. Ooh, I didn't know. Or it's a way to discover something about yourself. You know, I, and trust me, I have what they might call failed a lot. Although I think over time, I just don't think of it as failure. I think of it more as, um, I'm just in a buffet, I'm just practicing, I'm deciding. You know, like, oh, that didn't work out. I don't want to do that anymore. Like when I was doing lots of government contracting and they wanted me to do other kind of contracting government that I just didn't want to do. So I pulled out, is that a failure? And maybe, maybe to the outside world, it might look like a, a failure. But to me, it was like, I wasn't happy doing it. That's not a failure. And that is really important. Are you happy doing it? Because if you're doing it to try to be be somebody, you're going to be miserable because you're trying to be somebody and then you will fail. Be happy. And then you're like a, like a little kid learning, which is what you want to be all the time anyway. That's exactly right. And, and again, it's about finding yourself, not getting attached to this idea of failure and, and kind of like finding your inner voice in a way. And that relates to my next question in a way. Uh, people say that a big part of leadership skill in general is speaking skill. Mm. How can one become a more impactful speaker, a more motivational speaker, and not a nervous wreck like me? Well, I, first off, you're doing a great job, okay? <laughs> you may think that you're, so that's just your head saying, it's your head saying to yourself, I'm nervous, but you, you're not coming off nervous at all. Mm -hmm. You're coming off really calm and, and secure. And, and so you have to know that sometimes we say we're going to be nervous and scared, nervous about something, or, or that because we've been trained to think that way, right? Oh, I'm scared of being on stage, so I'm going to act like I'm scared on stage, right? But here's what I've learned, and I've learned it from com I used to do stand up comedy, okay? The, the best thing about being on stage is telling the truth. So, what happens, a lot of people go on stage and they are, have written something, like a speech, that's really not coming from their, their, their heart. And so if you really make it come from your heart, your soul, like this is who you are, then, it's, then you're just talking to a, a bunch of friends, okay? This, the other thing about stage is there is a whole stagecraft for sure about how to, you know, where do you stand and where you go. But most importantly, it's getting there before you ever speak. See, everybody comes in when there's people in the room and everything's there and then they come in with their papers and they're going to read the papers and they're rustling the papers and they look uncomfortable being on stage. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could see that, like, like, oh my gosh, I hate this. Don't do that. If you're, have, if you're doing a presentation at school, for instance, or if you're doing anything, get there way before anybody is there. And you literally go into the room and you raise your hands and say, I own this room. This is my room. It's like, you don't feel nervous in your bedroom, right? No. 
you in your bedroom, you're going to be like, you've all been like singing, you've been acting away, you've been doing your thing in your bed, and you're really comfortable. What I tell people is go to the, wherever it is that you're speaking early before anybody else is there. I mean, if it has to be two hours, three hours before, and then you walk the room and you're like, this is my, this is my, you're in, I'm welcoming you into my house. This is my stage. Even though the building might have somebody else's name, you need to own that stage. Is that helpful? It is really helpful, actually. You made me feel better about myself uh, there. And you talk about putting yourself out there and finding and getting comfortable in the space. In today's world, people find that most one of the most comfortable spaces for them is on social media, online. I mean, I don't know how they find that, but I, <laughs> me personally, no, not at all. But that's in today's world, do you think that social media and and the internet can be, how impactful can they be in becoming successful entre in entrepreneurship or as a, as a speaker, a public figure? Well, so online is not going away, right? Zoom meetings, remote work, that's the future, okay? So yes, you have to be great. You have to be really learn to speak in front of live people but you also have to be aware that you're building brand online. So let's say you're attending a class and it's a Zoom class, okay? So there it is, you're talking and you see everybody else. Now you've been on those Zoom classes, right? Yes. And this is what you see people doing. <laughs> you see people, in <laughs> you know, you see people like eating, like, dude, you notice how you look? You know, you see, you see people going, Putting on makeup, you know, doing stuff like, like, did you know, do you notice what you're putting, your, doing? You have to realize every time you're on camera, literally, you're on camera. It is as though you are on TV and you're the star of your show. So let's say you're in a class, people are going to notice if you're looking at the camera. So like if I, if I, so I'm looking at here, I am looking at the camera, but I don't see the camera. I see the person on the other side of that lens. That's who I'm talking to. I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to a camera. I'm having a conversation with you. And if you understand that so that, for instance, in this place, I'm having a conversation with you. I'm having a conversation with you. I'm talking to you. I'm not hiding out. And when you do that and you're conscious of it, you are seen as a leader. And, and uh, social media in general is kind of a magnet for leaders. I mean, they want to put themselves out there. And I mean, not all of them, but it's no, generally they, accepted. I, was, I will tell you <laughs> that most leaders I've met hate being on social media. Hate, because you know why? Mm -hmm. They're exactly like you, like they're human. It's like, oh my gosh, do I have to be, you know, do I have to have the lights, camera, look, this is really uncomfortable, right? For most, this is uncomfortable. And then they're on Zoom meetings and they have to have these, these conversations. It's really hard. They don't like it at all. And they're somewhat similar to you. It's, it's amazing. They <laughs> really are. It's like, I'm doing this. I have to do this. I don't like doing this, <laughs> but I'm going to show up. Uh, I guess you could put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and people turn to social media and the internet as well for role models, the people they look up to. I want to be that. I want to be him. I want to be just like that. Who's your biggest role model? I have a lot of role models. Mm -hmm. um, I have to name one. I mean, it would be nice. Um, <laughs> So, so, so from a business standpoint, so I have a lot of different role models. What the people who I'm watching right now is Mel Robbins, mm -hmm. how she's presenting herself on social media. So Mel Robbins is a speaker and she's had a, a, a TV show that failed. Um, but I, I'm watching and my team is watching how is she presenting herself. So is there something that we could learn from how she's doing that, that we can mimic or make it Pegin style. How can we do that? 
So I am watching her and, and how she's promoting her business. I, I really like that. Um, I'm very, th there's a couple of other um, people that I'm watching that how are they presenting their image out there? So I do look at, so I look at politicians, how are they getting attention? I'm looking at um, corporate leaders, how are they showing up or not, right? There's a woman, Carla Harris, that I'm observing how she's doing it and how she's showing up so that I can, not that I want, I don't want to be like them at all. I love being me. I love being me. So I have no desire to be like them. I do want to learn from what they're doing. I want to learn and, and, and again, smush it into a Pegine style because they're doing things that I want to do. They're having some of the, the successes that I were working towards. So I just want to learn. I like that message that I want to be, I love being me, you know, I want to be me. Is there, is there a message or idea that you want our student viewers, our regular folks at home watching, those who came to see you present today, to take home with them? Like a simple roundabout message or idea. Be bold, be brave. Here's what I'm going to tell you all. <laughs> just snap your fingers and just go. Be bold, be brave, be seen, be heard, be paid well. That's my message. Be bold by being yourself. You are an amazing human. You're an amazing man. You're an amazing woman that's watching this. You're an amazing person. Be bold and own yourself, right? Be brave. When you have those little callings, yeah. answer them. Just be brave. Trust it. There is no failure. There might be hurt. There might be tears. You'll get over it. Just be brave enough to go after it, right? Be bold, be brave, be seen. Do what you're doing right now. <laughs> like you're, you know, your own un, being un, be uncomfortable, be comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Just, just do it, yeah. right? So be bold, be brave, be seen, be heard. Use your voice because you could change the world using your voice. You could change. You could communicate your, your essence, your desires, your, your gift. Just. Some people, holidays are coming about. Some people, you know, know about Santa Claus, right? So most people for eight years believed in Santa Claus a lot. Take that belief that you had in Santa Claus and believe in yourself that way. If you believed that Santa Claus was a gift, trust me, believe that you yourself would give you gifts. So be bold, be brave, be seen, be heard, and be paid well. Money is good. Abundance is good. Gratitude is good. It's good. I love your messages. I really do. I mean, you're so, I mean, humble and you have a lot of humility and are easy to speak to. One last thing for you, though. I don't know if you don't know what I'm doing here, but is there a question you've always wanted to be asked <laughs> <laughs> that nobody's ever asked you before? This question is becoming a real pain in the neck. Let me tell you something. <laughs> um, I think that that the question that most so mo what the question that most people never ask me is how diversified my business is. Mm. Um, the like really rare people ask, and so when we talk about failure and we talk about this is a, such a business answer that I'm going to give. When you talk about business, for instance, you can't put all of your, your hopes just in one product. You have to diversify because the failures happen that are so out of your control. I cannot control people, places, things, or situations. I can only control my reaction to it. So I have to be able to act fast so I have... So, for instance, when the pandemic came, well, there was no live speaking. Mm -hmm. There's no way I could do. So I had already invested because I, I knew the future was going to be virtual. So I invested in creating my own little home studio. 
I took my first conferences, and within three day, th three weeks, we went from doing it live to doing it virtual. And we had people from all over the world joining the conference. I was the first one to do that, at least in my world, right? So the pandemic hit like the 20th, the 25th. We were doing a virtual conference. Did we know what the heck we were doing? Hell no. <laughs> but we learned, and everybody thought it was great. They thought I had been doing this forever like a duck paddling, trying to get through this stuff. So we do that, we do online courses. Um, I do, I, uh, we do live training like this, speaking. We do, I have uh, mastermind groups. I have uh, professional role players and we do these scenarios. So I've diversified my business so that there's always multiple streams of income coming in. So if there's a crash here, this will be okay. If they pull the plug on speaking, it's all right, I have online courses. If they, the internet stops, okay, that's all right, I could do all live stuff. You know, like you constantly, I have to constantly create, because I'm a creator, like, just, like, just like being in this museum and you see these beautiful pieces of art and you know, photography and you realize there's so much. So you're constantly creating. You have to. Mm -hmm. It's part of life. You've opened my eyes today. I mean, I mean, I'm looking at things in a different way, but that's what you do, right? This is what you do for people. This is why people come to you, to see you present. Uh, thank you for, for taking the time to do this today. It's been a pleasure, really, and for coming down to Daytona, I mean, to present to everyone. I'm sure everyone enjoyed the presentation. I hope so. You were crowded. I mean, people, you had all fans crowded around you for a while, didn't you? Yeah, I did. It was pretty cool. Uh, well, that's it for today. If anyone watching at home, uh, any students want to get into entrepreneurship, we have lots of resources for you. Uh, Pagin has her own too, right? Her own website, or what is it? Right, so you could find me everywhere. Type in Google, Pegine, P-E-G-I-N-E, -E, power. Just go to Pegine, P-E-G-I-N-E dot com, and you go to Team Pegine, T-E-A-M, P-E-G-I-N-E. But I'm on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and no, I'm not going on Snapchat. <laughs> um, I do have a Snapchat account, I'm just not on it. And yeah, just, just reach out. And we also have on our Daytona State College website resources for you as well. Just go to the search box, type in entrepreneur, and there are lots of links and stuff there to get you started. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for coming, Fajin. It's been great. Bye-bye. Uh,